there seem to be a number of unexplainable mysteries from around the world, some requiring a more open mind to understand whereas others might require an understanding of the universe we haven't yet quite attained. Some of the most interesting mysteries we face can then ultimately help us better understand the past, present and future of humanity, along with the nature of our universe. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be going over five different strange British mysteries that people have yet to explain and investigations are still ongoing. The Beast of Bodmin Moor Back in early 1995, the British government received more than 60 reported incidents taken from locals of Bodmin Moor of which reported that the residents were encountering a large black panther-like creature with scraggling furs, a large powerful jaw, the muscled body of a big cat more than four feet long and black furs making it nearly impossible to see at night until the creature is close enough to attack. This led to the government starting an official investigation into the area of Bodmin Moor to try to better understand the existence of the creature and whether or not it posed a threat to the residents. Shortly after the investigation began, a skull of a leopard was found on the banks of the nearby river and many began to speculate that perhaps there was a never-before-seen local species of large cat in the region. These creatures were then quickly given the name of the Beast of Bodmin Moor, which led many experts quickly trying to assess the situation and better understand how a leopard could have arrived in the region. Many theories and myths have started that a rich private collector could have been illegally importing the creatures that soon found themselves freed all throughout the region. A theory that would explain quite reasonably how the beast came to be and why it would be in the open areas of Bodmin Moor. Others believe that the beast of Bodmin Moor is a direct descendant of the native wildcat species that was believed to have gone completely extinct in Britain more than a hundred years ago but is now making a comeback. Outside of the 60 direct reports of the creature, there have been other reports of leopard calls, hissing, growling, mutilations of livestock and even missing pets that have been found half-eaten no more than a few days later. Shrugborough Inscription Often referred to as the world's top uncracked cipher text is that of the Shrugborough inscription found in the area nearby Staffordshire, England. This inscription is known to be carved onto the side of the 18th century artefact known as the Shepherd's Monument, located in the grounds of the Shrugborough Hall. The Shrugborough inscription, a carved grouping of letters or Roman numerals that resides slightly below a mirror image of Nicholas Poussin's painting, shows the letters O-U-O-S-V-A-V-V in that specific order with the two letters D and M at the bottom of the inscription on opposite sides of the writing. Though there have been many theories surrounding the reason for the existence of the Shrugborough inscription, it has been widely accepted that no such theory satisfactorily explained the inscription at the base of the image and continues to be a mystery for historians attempting to understand why it was inscribed. Some of these theories range from the letters being a coded dedication by George Anson to his deceased wife, George Anson being the owner of the Shrubber estate during the writing of the inscription, to even the belief that perhaps the inscription was added on as a mistake by the original mason responsible, unaware of where the appropriate inscription should have been placed. Today, the spokesperson for the property that is now owned by the National Trust stated back in 2014 that the site gets more than five to six people a week claiming to have solved the code and that, because of this, they are sceptical to believe any reasoning or assumption provided for the letterings and has become accepted by scholars and researchers to be a mystery impossible to satisfyingly explain. The Knuckers of Sussex 
One of the strangest mysteries found across England is that of the legends surrounding the existence of a number of water dragons believed to have been located around Sussex referred to only as the Knuckers. The Knuckers were rumoured to have lived in small ponds and lakes known as Knucker Holes and were supposedly responsible for the destruction of smaller villages, the disappearances of villagers, devouring and tearing apart livestock and infesting areas across England. This led to a number of local kings devising ways to have the dragons slain and completely eradicated in population by using knights as hunters to hunt down and slay the creatures in different reported villages and nearby bodies of water. A number of legends have formed from these supposed knuckers and different variations in how the dragons were slain or outwitted have also become popular folklore across smaller villages in the area, leaving credence to the legends regardless of where they derive from. This has left many wondering if there truly was a larger species of megafauna capable of being portrayed as a dragon that worked to be an infesting species across England. Many point to modern-day large lizards such as that of the Komodo dragon of whom have ancestral megafauna cousins that commonly fit the description of knuckers and would have held their natural habitats in ponds and other bodies of water. These species would also have a very small population given that their ancestral cousin, the Komodo dragon, is capable of generating offspring from just a single member of the species as they are capable of reproducing asexually. Unfortunately, this asexual reproduction is also very limiting and could mean that the species was vulnerable to eradication even before hunting of the megafauna began. Slayer's Slab Following mysteries surrounding the legends of the Knuckers and other dragon-like stories across England, the rumours surrounding the Slayer's Slab continues to be one of the centres of stories of folklore surrounding that of a knight slaying the last knucker found in England. According to the story, the King of Sussex believed that the knucker living nearby their collection of villages was becoming far too powerful for any one man to defeat. This led him going to a wide variety of knights in the hope that a small army could be formed, but no man was willing to fight for the king to slay such a beast. It was not until the King of Sussex offered his daughter's hand in marriage that a single knight came to the king in the hopes of defeating the dragon and wedding the Princess of Sussex, of which normally would have been an impossible ceremony to perform as knights were prevented from being romantically connected with royal figures. The knight would go on to slay the dragon when finding it residing in a small pond referred to as its knucker hole located near Lyminster earning the title of the Slayer after accomplishing such a feat. After the beast was defeated, the knight returned to marry the daughter and later settled down in Lyminster for the rest of his natural life. The Slayer would later pass away in the town and would lead to the rumours of the Slayer's Slab, an unmarked gravestone located at a church in Lyminster that has no name or marking on the tombstone except for that of a cross overlaying a herringbone pattern that led many people to believe it's the grave of the slayer that defeated the last dragon of England. The True Purpose of Rudlow Manor Originally created as a Bathstone mining station, the area that would later become Rudlow Manor was worked and designed to mine bathstone from the region to be used in massive building projects, utilising the material and its ability to be cut in any direction, a property that other layering stones do not have. This led to larger scale projects and cheaper means of production, of which worked to help build hospitals, different forms of housing and other major construction projects across the United Kingdom. This would, however, change after the site would become a main operations area used during World War II, alongside underground tunnels and mining shafts, creating a more clandestine atmosphere surrounding the location. After what alien enthusiasts refer to as a definitive UFO incident, Redlow Manor was then seen as a hotspot for alien activity and a control centre for further investigations. This incident occurred as Royal Air Force pilots 
returned from a bombing raid and encountered unidentified flying objects. Though the details around this incident are unknown, released reports provide further information claiming that Winston Churchill himself asked for the event to be covered up to prevent mass panic. This would develop into its own team of investigators from Rudlow Manor within the operations room, as weekly reports would have been filed regarding the presence of extraterrestrials and the military's involvement. Further leaked information began spreading that the underground shadow factory soon became used as a potential reverse engineering facility as the Royal Air Force had supposedly recovered a crashed alien spaceship that was being studied and held in the underground facility. Interestingly enough, these rumours are further confirmed by the James Bond equivalent of the alien world, Nick Pope, of whom had used to work for the British Ministry of Defence and was tasked by the government to study and gather further information and research relative to unidentified flying objects, the alien presence and their potential threat to national security. Pope would later go on to be an advocate for the disclosure projects with the hopes of the UK government releasing further documents relative to their findings of extraterrestrial activity, but would later go on to say that mysteriously all of the files pertaining to the 1950s operations at Rudlow Manor that concerned alien activity was destroyed and unable to be recovered. Today, the site is still one of the biggest centres of alien mystery for the British population. But what do you all think of these strange British mysteries that continue to be the centre of attention for the British people, but have yet to supply satisfying and realistic answers? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.